a monster. I'm your number one fan, 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 fan. Now clear your mind. You know what scares you? It has from the very beginning. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare, huh? Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Midnight Monster Corner Podcast. I'm your host as always, Corey, and alongside me is my good pal, Tony. What's going on, brother? Not much, bud. How you been? I've been good. I've been good. Yeah. <laughs> so, we're back doing another episode. I, You know, honestly, I was I was quite happy with this one. Yeah? Yeah. That was cool, because, you know, had I, had I had you not mentioned it, I wouldn't have known about this film, so... And it's a it's a fun little film. Yeah. But um, before we get into it, how's life, man? How's things? Yeah, life's great, man. Life's been wonderful for me. Um, just uh, just staying busy, like 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 I always do. But um, oh yeah. yeah, things have been things have been wonderful for me in that in that regard. But how, how about you, brother? How how things been for you? Been good. Yes. It's been good. Been. <laughs> work yeah it's the grind i, I oh, got yeah. that oh yeah i understand no, I mean, it's it's been uh less stressful i had um uh, i had a run-in uh, uh uh last week um with uh, uh somebody higher up he was a president of a company and uh i got a little mouthy with him you know <laughs> so wasn't the president of my company he was just, he was a customer of ours and i mean i was just so dumbfounded by this guy anyways i'm getting off subject i'm not gonna dwell on it yeah it was the past it's done <laughs> i could tell you about it in a minute because it's crazy it's a crazy story so remind me after this episode and i will tell you about it because it's it's insane um, well now you built it up for for the audience course so i cannot I cannot talk about it on here. Sorry. Um, yeah, it's just I'm one of those things. I'm yeah. not sure I understand that. <laughs> but yeah, I, I will tell you about it because it's interesting. It's crazy. Anyways, so folks, if you're not a uh, part of our Facebook group, make sure you head over there. Um, it is a closed group. We will let you in if you ask. Um, and just come and join the discussion. Uh, I know I need to get back in there and start posting more. I've been off of social media for quite some time now, so I need to get back in there and start posting stuff and getting stuff rolling out there and, uh, you know, different things, memes, whatnot. Um, and also if you, uh, like this uh, video and, uh, you like our episodes, make sure you like, share and subscribe, let your friends and family know if they are horror fans or you want to get them in. Uh, if they're new fans of the genre and just want, you know, some eyes on to what good movies are out there and what terrible movies. We don't just like movies. We also shit on them, too. So, <laughs> so, so make sure that you uh, check out our episodes and let your friends know. Um, but with that, uh, Tony, what are we uh, what are we covering? We are covering 2017's Dead Shack. For it. That's what we are uh, covering tonight. Yeah. Uh, fun, fun little movie, uh, Shutter exclusive. So if you guys want to see it, um, make sure you're. If you want, go subscribe to Shutter. It's really not that bad. The the subscription's great. Costs are great for it. Um, you get premium content, great content. So I would highly recommend if you guys don't have it, you really really want to watch a lot of the movies that me and Corey are covering on a on a week-to-week basis are probably going to be on shutter um Mm -hmm. or majority of them might be um so it's a great way to to stay connected and and to check out some good flicks because they have quite a selection of stuff and they Mm -hmm. they seem to regularly rotate uh things out and they have great exclusives like like this film that we're covering tonight um but yeah it's 2017's dead shack Mm mm-hmm and it does have a physical release too, as well. So it, it is out there, um, but 
it, it's it's readily available on streaming if you if you have the Shutter app or, or if you're subscribed to it. You know, honestly, just to get off subject a little bit, um, yeah, I'm noticing more and more at Walmart. Anytime I walk through Walmart, I'm seeing more and more Shutter stuff than anything. Um. You know, there for a while it was Lion Gate and it was, uh, you know, other stuff like IFCs and stuff like that. And now it seems to be Shutter's turn. And, uh, you know, I, I feel that Shutter delivers. I, I, lo- yeah. I love their stuff. Um, just the cover art alone is, is cool as hell. So I dig yeah. it. The cover art on the um, on the Blu-ray is it's it's it almost looks standard, but the when you go on um letterbox or, or or check out the imdb that that artwork is really sick mm-hmm. really co- i like the colors they pop they look really cool um you're talking uh, about like the blue and the pinks and stuff yeah 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 yeah, yeah. it almost kind of reminded me of like psycho gorman kind of reminded me of uh the um because the neighbor wears that riot suit kind of reminded me of the uh the plague from uh uh, Hobo with the shotgun kind of gave me those vibes. Or uh, from Mandy, the the demonic bikers from Mandy. I can't remember mm. if they were called. You certain. know what? Honestly, you know what? Honestly, the vibe I got, like as soon as they were like dressing up, like when they were gearing up in that shed. Yeah. Um. The vibes I got was uh, almost like wormwood. Oh wow. Yeah, you know, because they were like dressing up, and I was like, "Oh, these dudes look like people from Wormwood or something." Wow, that's a movie I haven't seen in quite some time. Yeah, um, I know it's got a sequel too. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. So. Mm-hmm. You visit might have to revisit that one um, so soon. But um, yeah, yeah, that's that's a that's another pretty pretty good uh, comparison. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Corey, you want to get into uh, the the plot of the of the movie simple as it <laughs> yeah the, well this isn't a very complex film and for for what this film is you don't really need complexity i no. love that i love simple films and uh yeah basically uh so you got a main character his name is jason and he just it seems like he just wants to fit in and he's got this tool of a best friend i guess you would say um but yeah, the guy's a prick, um, Colin, and it seems like he's he's more of a family in this family than he is with his own family. So uh, you know, he goes on a camping trip with this family, um, which is uh, also Colin's sister Summer, uh, her dad Roger, and then um, Roger's that, girlfriend. Yeah, I don't think I don't think I don't think she's married to him yet. Um, but Lisa, yes, yeah, I'm very high maintenance chick too. Anyways, getting off subject. <laughs> so they go to a cabin in the woods, um, and they basically just go exploring through the woods and come across the the, the neighbor's house, um, which for some reason she's got a zombie family in there, yeah, and she That's feeds funny. them. Never, never explained. explained. No, never yeah. explained. Why? Um, why do you explain? <laughs> no, you don't. You don't really need it explained. <laughs> and again, it's it's not a complex. In I for usually I would need an explanation, but for this movie, it just it felt right. Not even at, knowing why or mom. knowing how. You know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, um, we can get into this wild ride real quick. So that's that's basically the synopsis. It's short and sweet. They have to fight their way through this um, little zombie family. You know, demented mother, wife, whatever the fuck she is. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's pretty. <laughs> that that's as simple as it gets, folks. That this this not like a, like Corey said, not a lot of complexity to the story. But the reason I like this movie in particular is because most zombie films, as you know. They deal with zombies on a on, on a worldwide scale of, of an outbreak, and then so many people are are ravaged by the zombie hordes and and, and everything like this. this. Is a simple story, 
the world isn't in an outbreak. There's not zombies roaming around and tearing shit up. It's just like a zombie family in the middle of the woods. And there's no, like I said, no explanation for it at all. But they just, the characters just so happen to run across them um, just by happenstance, just because mm-hmm. they're bored in their um, cabin that they rented or their, I guess it's a cabin. I don't know. It's, it's, it's more roomy than, than your typical cabin, but it's, um, it's it's just boring there. These kids, they don't want to hang around. The the dad, uh, Mr. Slade or Roger, he's he's uh, playing uh, drunk go fish or or something with his with his girlfriend, and it, that <laughs> they don't want any part of that. They don't want to be around, and um, so they just get bored and walk around, and just so happen to stumble upon the neighbor's house and and hang around and loom around and and just be they're nosy and mm. they find some some really heinous shit that the neighbor's doing. Apparently what she does is she lures uh, college, like college men um, to her house, thinking that they're going to score with her just for her to drug them and feed them to her, her zombie family that's in the basement. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But that's her big thing. Cause there's a a scene when Roger and all the kids and Lisa, well, Lisa stays in the car, but they're all at this um, breakfast, like this diner. And Colin, the kid or the son, makes a like a comment. Look at all these dude bros that have gone missing because there there's a big like you know have you seen like a lost yeah, missing person billboard person's billboard. So um, you could tell she's been doing this for quite some time. And even there's a pre credit scene I think when uh, a young college kid is trying to get away from the house. He's all drugged up and she's got her zombie husband chasing after him. And he hides in the car and she blows the windows out with her shotgun because she runs around right gear and a shotgun so she doesn't get bit or attacked by her, her zombie family. So um, and then the zombie husband attacks the, the and presumably presumably eats the, the college kid in the in the car. So we kind of get set up for that just from that scene alone. And then he cuts to Jason and um, him. There's a subplot with him where he, he doesn't. He's he has a rich family, but his family are always like combative and they're they're fighting a lot. So he hides the fact that he comes from um, a wealthy home or, or mm-hmm. that he's well off, and he pretends like he's poor. And he hangs out in the trailer park where they pick him up because he doesn't want them to know that he lives in like an affluent neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess I don't know. I don't understand really why he he mentioned something about. Um, well, he, he feels like he feels like he just wants to fit in. Yeah. And so he makes everyone believe that he's just just average poor kid from the trailer park. So he'll fit in. OK. Yeah. Because he doesn't want to be treated any different. Differently. He hates his life that he has essentially, you know, coming from money or whatever. He actually explains that a little bit in the film. Yeah. He touches on it, but he's very skittish and he has no confidence and he's very, you know, he, he his friend who is presumably his best friend treats him like shit. And you know, like, it's just a complete dick to him for no reason other than just he can get away with it. Cause Jason really doesn't have a backbone and he won't defend himself or anything or he won't stick up for himself, which is like a common, common thing. And then at the end he kind of finds his, his, you know, his push and then he, he gets more mm-hmm. confident and, and starts to to show like some leadership skills and um, that he can handle himself and in, in the chaos that's going on. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, I, I just like the fact that it's it's low key. It's low. I mean, you could tell it's a budget film. It, it looks great. I mean, shot well. Um, a lot of drone shots. I've I, I realized there's a lot mm-hmm. of overhead shots. So, and I know at that time, a lot of filmmakers were utilizing the drone technology to to really innovate camera work and stuff like that. So that mm-hmm. was pretty, common. and I think it's still common today. I think a lot of filmmakers still do that, but, um, yeah, it's, yeah, you see it more and more often. I see a lot of, I saw a lot of overhead shots. Something's been, I've been on a roll late, lately with the movies I've been watching have a lot of overhead, like droning shots. And mm-hmm. I watched smile recently. And that, that also had a lot of disorienting, like overhead shots too. And, um, I don't know. It just seems to be a common thing, a common theme I've been noticing with what I've been watching. Yeah. 
Well, I did notice um, there is a scene where he, um, I don't know who the director is or, you know, camera work. Anyways, um, there's a scene where he's traveling through the woods and going in between trees and stuff. And I was like, wow, that camera shot is just, and it's no actors. It's just, it's just the camera moving through the woods. And I guess it's mimicking the kids walking through the woods. I will say it's a, uh, it's a really good camera work right there. Yeah, I did. I did really enjoy, enjoy that. Pretty There's good. some other subtle things that I did notice where, so <clears throat> you could definitely tell the director is, is uh, learning his way around the camera. Yeah. Um, but you could definitely tell he's he was going for some beauty shots as well through this film. I did notice that. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> I, lo I love stuff like that. I mean, that's cinematography right there. You know, it's good cinematography. Yeah, we talk about we talk about the uh, cinematography a lot when we're we're discussing films and and how we appreciate the aesthetic that, especially mm -hmm. nowadays with the um, with the they're shooting more digitally. Mm -hmm. make it any low budget film seem like a little little higher budget with with just their the camera work and stuff like that it just works out yeah. but um yeah this is so we we get introduced to the the family um you can tell jason's got like a little crush on summer or he's got a little thing for her but he plays it off like he doesn't Colin keeps giving him shit for it and he's like trying to push it off like no i don't know that's not no, he's not even like she's not even my type or whatever, and, and he <laughs> starts making up reasons for her not being his type because he, he's yeah. totally. Lying. Yeah, she's so, like, well, why? Why am I not? And he's like, yeah. oh, the, the way you walk. You walk funny, and plus you have blonde hair. <laughs> it's just like because you know he just doesn't want to. He, he doesn't want to admit anything. Yeah. And she just seems cool. Like she's okay. She's she's just like really just toys with him and messes with him. Like they they seem to both give him a lot of shit. <laughs> I, I guess they just keep pushing and pushing and giving him shit because they just want him to break out of his shell and just mm -hmm. stick up himself and kind of uh, put his foot down, which he does not do. And even their dad does that. He's like, man, you gotta, you gotta man up. You gotta, you know, power five, power five. Yeah, yeah, dude. And that just goes. So the best character in this movie, hands down, is Roger. He's I love Roger. Yeah. Hands down, the best, the most funny. Like every line he 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 says in the movie is hilarious. He's just he has such charisma. The guy I don't know who the actor is. I can't remember the actor's name, but man, he's right. just charisma personified. He, he's just funny. He's his timing's good with his jokes or with his with his delivery. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just there's it's joke a minute with him. A yeah. lot of crazy scenarios with him. A lot of one-liners um, are just amazing with this guy. It, they are. I mean, they're just perfect. They're perfect for his character. When he's, I love when he's like, when they get into the diner and he's cracking jokes with the the waitress, trying to get her to laugh, and she is not having any of it. He's like, "Oh, okay, that one, no, no, not 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 that one either." Okay, and he just kind of gives up. <laughs> it's like done because he's been trying and trying. You uh, see how that, huge those fucking menus were, though. Yeah. <laughs> I just love that she goes what can I get for you he goes how about a bigger menu <laughs> it's nothing it's she's not a fucking piece. straight face face yeah <laughs> that that was fantastic like every everything with him I could watch a whole movie just on his character mm. and be and it'd be just the best comedy but um he's <laughs> it's just it's great I love the scenario so um, when Summer, Colin, and um, Jason uh, see what the neighbor is doing, they stumble upon that she's actually feeding these two. There's these two douchey guys that are um, that just won't shut up. They're really full of themselves. They're trying to trying to get with the neighbor and have a have a threesome with her, I guess. And she's just like egging it on, egging it on because she wants to get them comfortable enough to drug them. And to pa make them pass out. So he, uh, when that happens, and they see what's going on, and they see her trying to feed the uh, dude bros, as they're, they're called, to um, to uh, uh, her family, they run off. And then Colin does the dumbest shit ever. He throws uh, a, 
like a rock or something at the window of her truck mm-hmm. or something and, and calls her out and this is and I'm like, why the hell would you do? And, and they're just looking at him like you big dumbass. And that's my main call. I couldn't stand his character. He drove me absolutely insane. <laughs> I think Ab- Colin worked. Cause you, you can't, I mean, you almost need like a quirky dumbass. And I mean, that, that was Colin. No, he was just, uh, you got your you got your strong character summer you've got almost your subconscious character that would be jason and then you've got your kooky character colin i love the fact that he just he he's quick to do something without thinking about it so uh-huh. like so like in this instance that you're talking he fucking picks up a rock throws it out a window busts a window and they're like, dude, what the fuck? And he was like, well, I probably just saved that other guy's life. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, oh, you saved the other guy's life. What about ours? And he's like, yeah, oh, well, oh, yeah. He's like, did he so say, now like, she's going to know we're here. He's like, I thought you were going to throw a rock, too, or something like that. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I thought you were going to pick up a rock, too. Yeah, it's ridiculous. But so they run off back to the uh, cabin where Roger and Lisa are, and they're playing like, like a drunk go fish to, to start stripping and stuff like, which is so funny. So damn hilarious. And <laughs> what do they call it? Their foreplay game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. He, so he's already at this point, he's already blasted. He had been drinking and smoke. He's not the most responsible parent in the world. Definitely but, not, but. He's, so he's, he's blasted completely. And, they just tell him the story about this the neighbor over there, and she's like a cannibal, and she's feeding, she's feeding people to her family and stuff. He's like, "What?" He's like, "All right, we gotta go. We gotta go pay this lady a visit." And yeah, he's, no, he, he's like, he's like, so you're saying our neighbor is a cannibalistic woman? <laughs> and they're like, "Yeah." And he goes, "She hot?" <laughs> they're like, "No." Oh. Yeah, he goes. We need to go check this out. <laughs> we need to go check this out. <laughs> it gets out. <laughs> like we're gonna, we're gonna go find. We're gonna go find some. What do you say? And we're gonna go find. We're gonna go talk to some hot cannonballs. <laughs> <laughs> and he does uh, the. He does. He's like, look, look. He, he's uh, taking a piss, but he's like, he's got an axe, so he's using the axe as like his his kickstand. <laughs> The guy he pisses so much on the way to the house. It's unreal. He he stops like three times to take a piss. <laughs> I love the fact that he snatches the axe from, from Jason and and he's like, this needs to be in the hands of a responsible adult. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love his character so much, dude. <laughs> and then my one of my favorite lines, my favorite thing was um Jason's like, are you sure we should be letting him walk around with an axe, like, like going into the house? And this is that. And, and uh, Summer, the daughter, is like, oh, don't worry. In like 30, 30 minutes, his drunk ass will fall asleep. And he's he's like, no, I won't. <laughs> he's like, out like off screen because he yeah. heard every every word. He's like, no, I won't. <laughs> yeah, she's like, he'll get bored and fall asleep. And then yeah. like halfway there, he's like, I'm bored. <laughs> He says that he's bored like three or four times. He's like, I was promised some some hot cannonballs and and I'm it was, they have not delivered. <laughs> and he just kind of hangs around and stuff while they're exploring the house and he's just bored out of his mind. Well, I like that one scene before they get into the house. He fucking walks up and falls into that um like barrel of burnt flesh or whatever. And he's like, oh, it smells like an asshole or something. And he stands <laughs> up and he's like. <laughs> He's like got it on his finger, and he's like this. <laughs> I think he even sticks it in Jason's face or something. Yeah, dude, he's Rogers, like hands down the best character in the movie. He, oh, he's, just the one-liners delivered from this guy was amazing. Joke. I mean, there's jokes. There's other jokes in the movie, but he is he is just perfect as the the comedian mm-hmm. as the joke of the movie for sure. Um. I'm just thinking of all the different scenarios. I don't. We don't want to. Of course, we don't want to go through all of them for the viewers, just in case you want to check out the film and watch it, because we don't want to spoil the the 
the great comedy for you, but there's some great lines that he there's, said. There, and it's not just Jason. There's there's lines delivered by everyone that yeah. are just funny oh, like to sell. Because there's like one scene where Jason's walking through, Jason and Summer's walking through the house. And um, at this point, Roger's passed out in the fucking house, which, which makes matters even better. Yeah. And they come across a, um, uh, what do you call those fucking closet doors that open up like that? Anyways, it's rattling. So there's something inside. They open it up and just pure instinct, Jason just goes for it with an axe. Fucking nails the the dude bro right in the shoulder. He's still alive and he's like, oh my god. He's got blood spurting everywhere and he's like, it's okay, I know first aid. You're gonna make it. And then the fucking zombie comes out of nowhere and gets him. gets him. His zombie buddy. Yeah. That turn, yeah. (laughs) That's great. Yeah. Some good a pretty good effects in the movie too, like as far as special effects go, and like you know, they don't really rely too much on the CG. And they like, I could, I could, I, if there was CG, uh, I, I didn't notice it. Yeah, I mean, it seemed like a lot of the, uh, the, the special effects were done in camera and mm-hmm. and like not pre, not, not CGI at all, practical. So that's mm-hmm. that was really pleasant, especially with you know with the lower budgets. It, it's so much easier to to CGI most of the gore and. Um, most of the just carnage and, and it just didn't go that route. So I can appreciate that. Um, which, like I said, just blew me away. I, I expected CGI. When I first heard about it, I was like, yeah, I expect CGI to be a little prominent in this. Um, yeah. To my amazement, it was not. Yeah. Like I said, I couldn't, I couldn't tell. So if there was CGI, kudos to you because I didn't notice it. Yeah, pretty- I didn't. I will say um, one of the downfalls that I didn't care for was oh, I almost kicked the chair over. Um, one of the downfalls um, was some of the practical effects. The the makeup on a couple of the zombies I just didn't care for. Um, the makeup on the husband I didn't yeah. like his character. I mean, I didn't like his face too much. Um, thought they could have went a different route there. I seen what they were trying to do, where they were trying to pull off that this guy's clearly been dead for quite some time because pretty much his his lips and all, all the all the muscle and 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 stuff here has pretty much eroded away, and it was just like teeth and bone right here. Um, it was like that around his eyes too, and I thought. You know, maybe in one area on his face, it would have been okay. But for all three areas, I didn't care for it too, too much. He almost yeah. looked more mummified than zombie to me. Yeah. Um, the uh, the other one was uh, the little boy zombie. I guess her son. He just straight up looked like Flyboy off of off of uh, Dawn, uh, Dawn of the Dead a little. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. He was just straight up blue. There was there was really no. I mean, he was a blue zombie. I mean, I don't know if it was just a little. Let me add this touch to George Romero. I don't know if that's what you know. Special effects was going for there, but I just I felt that this was just a blue child and not a zombie. It could have been. It could have been. Yeah, that could have been a little nod to Romero. Um, Maybe that's. I mean, that's. That's the only explanation I can think of. I mean, other than, I don't know. I just, for the 70s, it worked for Ramiro. For this film, I would have loved to have seen more flesh off of off of him. Maybe yeah. the subject matter of a zombie child is just too much and they didn't want publicity behind their film. I don't know what the deal was, but yeah. really I don't good. know. really don't know. You really don't know the situation. I mean, the daughter looked fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> she looked like a zombie. I mean, she looked the part, but I don't know. I dug it still. Um, everything special effects. The, the 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 amount of blood effects for this film was really, really good. 
It's, it was cool um, to see. It was cool to see Holly Hunter as the uh, as the neighbor, the mom. I mean, you just you, you just don't expect her to pop in, up in a movie like this at all. You know, it's just mm-hmm. it, she's always going to be uh, um, the what's her name, Mary from um, Dumb and Dumber to me. Yeah, like always going to be like I'm. I'm never going to see her in a different light other than that. It's just that because mm-hmm. I grew up on that movie, so like I watched it all the time. So, oh yeah, you know, honestly, I I love, I love when um, you get those surprises like that in films. And I was actually, I was just at work thinking about that today, because I was reminiscing a little bit on um, the movie Becky, and and how you got um, Kevin, uh, fuck, what's his last name? King of Queens actor Kevin. Kevin James. Kevin James, thank you. Playing the bad guy in that film, and he did really good. You know, I just I love that. I love that you can take somebody that has been in movies all their lives like this and play a serious horror villain or whatever, and I just pull it off. You know. Well, it it seems like her char- her her character in the movie or her acting is she's almost on autopilot. But it kind of makes sense for her character because she's been doing this for so long and she's probably exhausted. She's not like I said, she has this like monologue at the end where she's like, I don't get any appreciation or any thank you or anything like that. So she's like, you could tell it's like been stressing her out and and weighing on her. But she's just trying to keep her family together. So she really is cold and calculated, but she's all doing it just to keep her family intact Mm -hmm. No matter what it, it takes, no matter if she has to go next door and slaughter everybody just to keep the secret, um, she's willing to do that just to keep her family around. Because, I mean, when they and, – and we will get into spoilers, guys. So, like I said, if you if you don't want to know the end or what happens at the end, we got some pretty spoiler-heavy spoiler, spoiler heavy stuff coming up. So here's, here's your warning and stuff like that. If you haven't seen it yet and you want to see it or you're interested in it, please, by all means, check out Shudder. Um, subscribe to Shutter and, and check it out, or, or pick up a copy. Um, mm-hmm. It's not too expensive. You could probably find it on Amazon. But like I said, we will be getting the spoilers at the end because the, spo- the spoilers come heavy at the end. So, mm-hmm. um, basically, you know, when, once her family gets taken out um, by Jason and Summer and and everybody, they she flips the fuck out like she loses her mind. And she mm. she can't deal with it. And she starts like really going off on him and, and trying to trying to kill him and stuff like that. So um, all the while, you know, Roger he, for the most part is in that crawl space, and he's they they hit him away so he doesn't get you know so he doesn't get found out and he really can't defend himself in his mm. state. But um, I love the realization when he realizes like when he's getting out of there and he's looking around. He's like, whoa, you know, he's, he's starting to kind of come out of it a little bit and then he sees the kids on the ground and they're all hacked up and stuff like that that's when it he goes from like being drunk to being like oh shit like what did you guys do like he starts losing it and uh mm-hmm. he gets a concern so um just how quick he just snapped out of it and and really got serious and stuff like that was really cool love seeing that um of course i love that, I love that line when he comes out he's like oh hey guys you guys look fucking awesome <laughs> yeah, because we we didn't really you you mentioned it a little bit, but the montage scene where they're gearing up and stuff like that mm-hmm. was really I really dig that. Um, it's, it's perfect for you know their characters and stuff like that. And of course, it, it you want to want to do something like that if you're taking on like a couple zombies here and there. You don't want to get bit, or you want to keep you know padding on so you they don't bite exposed areas mm-hmm. and uh, you know spikes on there so they can. Keep, you know, keep your distance, of course, but um, you know that that whole scene gets crazy. Um, and then we get into the end. Well, we didn't even talk about Lisa, so they, you know, Holly Hunter, the, the neighbor, takes her family through the woods because she's pretty much tying up all loose ends with the kids and their family. So she takes them over to their cabin, and the uh, the zombie, I think, is the dad attacks one of the kids. I think. Um, they attack Lisa and then Lisa becomes a zombie. And then, mm-hmm. um, 
like uh, and then uh jason's like i think she'll be or i can't remember if it was summer jason's like or is she gonna be okay and then she's like puking up like like blood or, or the black or the tar whatever <laughs> that is. And, and he's like no i think i think it's if 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 it's black, you, there's no going back or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's, the, the, yeah, he's like the blood's the blood's black. You don't come back. Yeah, <laughs> she's like now you n- n- now in this situation you start to develop a sense of humor. Yeah, like, I'm just being realistic, or I'm just being op- like like yeah, realistic. But um, yeah, so I like at least that, I like that scene where where Holly Hunter's character um. Goes in because she hears, you know, clearly some noise coming from the bathroom. Poor Colin's pissing all over the place, and he's like, everywhere. he's like, he's like trying to figure out how to stop pissing everywhere. Yeah. Pretty funny. While he's trying to eat hot dogs, yeah. Kids eating like fucking fifteen hot dogs. <laughs> I like how when they when they show up at the at the house after the uh, montage of them dressing up for the uh, big battle that's about to happen or whatever. They're, they're, like, behind a fucking uh, car or whatever. And he, like, looks over at Jason's character. He's like, hey, you got anything to snack on? I'm hungry. All I had was hot dogs. <laughs> uh, he's eating hot dogs. He's eating hot dogs with the buns. He's just eating the... <laughs> straight eating hot dogs, yeah. I don't even think they were cooked yet, either. Yeah, he was just straight eating them. At least it's, like, sensible bites, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> oh man dude that, yeah there's there's some there's some pretty good uh comedic comedic moments sprinkled through it in this movie they they're pretty you pretty much know this is a horror comedy like they mm. they make no no attempt to shy away from that and um and it, and it really wasn't a long film either it was it was pretty short well, shorter film yeah not, yeah not a long time uh quick in and out like like boom, you get your you get your jokes in there. You get a little bit of gore. You get a, a, a satisfying. Well, I, I hated that. You know, spoiler that that Roger got killed. I was like, mm-hmm. man, he's so cool. I don't want to see him go out like that. Poor bastard got stabbed and shot. Yeah, the best the best damn character in the whole movie, and you kill off that character. It's like, <laughs> like no. But it was it was so sad because he was like he was like. Um, at one point he's like in the kitchen with Jason and he's talking to Jason as if, you know, Jason is like a son to him. Yeah. And yeah. it was like, it was just so sad. Yeah. It sucks. That's, and that's all, you know, Jason's probably wanted to hear. Yeah. Cause he feels that this is more of a family than the family he actually has. He actually has. Yeah. 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 And he's been like, says that, um, in the movie, like yeah. he, the point to say that you guys are like you know a real family like my real family and mm. um you yeah, know that's really touching for his character because you could tell he just you know has a really really bad home life and, yeah. and he just doesn't feel comfortable going back to he doesn't even i don't think he tells his parents he's leaving he just leaves mm-hmm. just takes off and um yeah it's 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 sad dude when when he when he goes out when roger goes out it's like a bummer yeah, it it really heightens the 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 like emotions at the end when they take out the neighbor, which was great. Well, it's it's sad because in the uh, in the kitchen, Roger and Jason attack the neighbor, and she ends up stabbing Roger, and it's like no. And then it's like he's coughing up blood, you know. Usually that's a bad spell. Like once they're coughing up blood, that's it, you know. That that's kind of a telltale sign that that character is getting killed off in a film. And then and then it was looking like he was going to make it, you know. And it's like, oh, okay, Roger's going to live. Now he's he's giving power fives. He's joking, you know. And he's even tell, like Summer's like patching him up or whatever. And he's like, Colin, you were always my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> like while Colin's not even helping you up, it's some of it's helping you up. It's hilarious. Um, so they're joking and stuff, and it's like, okay, you know, you kind of get a little sense of relief, and then as they're walking to the truck, it's like blast that away, and it's like, well, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. I hated well, that shit. Joking, joking till the very end, man. Mm-hmm. Didn't 
didn't shy away from his character, him being a jokester. But yeah, and then, dude, when they take out the neighbor, when they run her over, she gets blasted by that truck. And then, you know, Colin delivers Death Blow with that sledgehammer, which is a great effect. It looks so cool. Yeah. Uh, nasty, gnarly smash of the of the head with the sledgehammer. Yeah. Uh, and then essentially, you know, they're 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 done. They they start driving away in that truck that they found and got the keys for. Her, and you know, Jason gets a call from his mom and he answers the phone and then say, like, "Hey, mom," and that's it. <laughs> the movie's <laughs> over. <laughs> I thought there was going to be like something that rolls after the credits, so I kept the credits rolling, but Easy. nothing, nothing uh, played. Hmm. I was expecting something too. I noticed that all the uh, the whole score was written by one single band. Wow. I did notice that. I just don't remember who it was. I should have wrote it down, but yeah. Uh, every song that was played in the movie was was written by them. Yeah. Yeah, it's, so. a, it's a quick one, man. It's a quick one and done. There's a couple, you know, some pretty good and jokes. It's, yeah. it's simple. It's literally two, you know, essentially two locations. I mean, there's other locations throughout the film. Like, there's the Richie neighborhood that he walks walks from and goes to the trashy neighborhood. You do see that. Yeah, um, the but then that's that's all the... Yeah, and then, the, like you said, the diner. But the main, the main focus is between the neighbor's house and the cabin. I swear I fucking know the way to that house because they walk through those fucking woods like five times. Yeah, it seems like it. But, yeah. You get connected to to how far away each uh, residence is to the other, with how many times they can walk through the woods and stumble through the woods, and it it's almost like a it, it almost kind of gives you a feel of the layout of this mm-hmm. uh, yeah, really really well. Yeah. But yeah, man, you uh, you uh, you got anything else you want to talk about it? I really don't, man. It's a simple, simple story, simple movie, simple mm-hmm. horror comedy. It's just, like I said, it's it's pretty basic as far as like story story goes, and and mm-hmm. like I said quicker. It's not a long. It doesn't have a long runtime. I think it runs, you know, runs about an hour and fifteen minutes or something like that. An hour twenty maybe. So yeah. it's, it doesn't feel like it. It feels like it runs shorter than that, but um, yeah, it's it's. And like I said, it's a fun little movie, though. It is. There's a couple of good jokes and, you know, some, some great, great shots, a little, you know, some um, more, like you kind of pointed out, more, uh, um, like, I don't know if, if this is the right term to describe it, but more uh, aggressive, like, filmmaking shots or more, um, you know, standout shots that that you wouldn't expect from from a, a lower budget film like this mm-hmm. uh, they really they really plan out the terrain and and and, and the locations and stuff like that mm-hmm. really well with the overhead shots too and the shots through the woods with the kids yeah and, I, would, I would i would say those are aggressive shots um, more ambitious. that's what i'm thinking of ambitious. more ambitious yeah definitely yeah. for this film you know but i i do like the fact that you know I would like to see more from this director, given the given what he delivered in this film. You know, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. It almost it almost gives a sense of hey, I can do some serious stuff too. Yeah, you know, I like that. I appreciate that. No doubt. So yeah, um, you ready to get into scores? Sure. You want you want to rate this film? Yeah, we can do that. You, uh, you want me to go or you want to go? How about you, Corey? Let's see what okay. you got rated this bad voice. This is, I think this is the first time watch for you. I've already seen this before, so mm-hmm. I just this was preference yeah. that in the beginning, but yeah. Yeah, so um, going back to how simple this film is, love it. Um, it works. Um, kept, you know, and kind of hitting on what you said. You know, where you say, you know, even though this film was like 115, 120 minutes long or whatever, it, it just definitely felt like 
or not 120 minutes long. That's, Jesus. No, I'm, I'm getting at like 100, like an hour and 15 minutes or an hour and 20 minutes. It, just, it felt shorter because it was more engaging, in my opinion. Um, subtle notes of character development. I love that. You got a strong female character in this film. Love that. Um, no, just overall, it was a fun, enjoyable ride. I can't say anything bad about it other than the two zombie characters. I just wish the makeup was a little bit better on. Um, shotguns used like a motherfucker. Uh, one of the things I did notice, and this is me just being picky. Um, so I didn't know they made uh, automatic double barrel shotguns. Okay. Just throwing that out there. Like it seemed like that motherfucker had like seven or eight bullets in it. Before it ran out of shells. Should have only taken two. But yeah. again. It's, it's a zombie movie. You're supposed to have a little fun. Yeah. Um, so just overall. It was a great time. I gave it a four. You know. Because it's not up there. Not up there fully on my scale. But it's it's there. I mm-hmm. dug it. Like I said. There's little subtle notes of character development with Jason. Love that. Um, I like how he finally grow and they actually do say wow your balls finally dropped and yeah, yeah. <laughs> i felt that they did yeah yeah they, uh, i agree man they, they, there's subtle character development in there that that's really fleshed out uh, um like a super super low budget film but doesn't look really really low budget or amateur in any way i mean they're really really ambitious like shots and um, the cinematography looks really, really solid um, for a couple locations throughout the movie that, that you have. I mean, everything's everything looks great. There's a couple of shots of the neighbor's house that look like it was the same shot kind of over and over and over again, but it was a good shot. Mm-hmm. So, um, like I said, it's not, you know, watching it a couple more times, it's like I remember it being funnier than it was, and that was one of the major drawbacks for me. It's like, ah, oh, damn, I remember, like, jokes just hitting left and right with this movie. But really, the the funniest character, the one I was laughing at the most, was Roger's character. And I think if if the other characters had held that level of of, of comedy, that there would it would have been how I remembered it when I first saw it, because um, I had such a fond memory of like cracking up, laughing at just not only him but other characters. But mm-hmm. this time around, it just seems like the humor really fit. Or gravitated more for me with his character but um yeah and then some of the effects are a little hokey with the the dad i agree with that i was going to mention that too and um before you got to it I, didn't, I wasn't quite sure what they were going for there um it just looked a little little hokey and, and i was praising most of the effects there's a lot of good like the dude bro with his guts hanging out and stuff like that and falling down the trap door and stuff like that was great but apparently he was climbing the ladder like no big deal uh, smart zombies apparently uh, <laughs> but um yeah they did it, i mean it's fun man it's a, it's a fun little time not the best horror comedy by any means i mean not up there with some of the classics and you know but i, I still laugh i still get a kick out of it still mm-hmm. fun i rated it about a three and a half okay yeah and uh we didn't even touch on it but um one of the other things is, you know, we, we talked about the head trauma, um, due to her, but what about him? You know, he got his fucking head shot off. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Was it, was it him that got his head shot off or who got their head shot off? It was a head explosion due to a shotgun. I forget who it was. It was one of them though. They got, maybe it was Lisa. Maybe it was Lisa that got her head shot off. Yeah. I just remember Roger getting blasted with it because he was the character that I was like, no, don't do yeah. it. Don't kill off this character. He's the best. Yeah. Sucks. Yeah. It's a shame. So, yeah. Well, you uh, you ready to land it? Yep, I think so, man. Okay. I'm ready. Well, folks, we hope we didn't spoil anything for you. And um, we hope that you uh, enjoyed our episode on The Dead Shack from 2017. We hope uh, that you like, share, and subscribe. Tell your friends, tell your family. And uh, like I said before, head over to our Facebook group and uh, 
just get conversations going over there. What uh, I'd like to get one here on on YouTube. What is your favorite zomcom? Like, what's your favorite comedy that's a zombie film? So I guess I guess what zombie? <laughs> yeah, zombie. Zomcom. Um, so just uh, let us know. I, I would love to. I would love to see if you guys could like maybe point something out to us and that we've never heard of or seen before. That would be awesome. That would be sick. Absolutely. That would be really cool. So, uh, but yeah, uh, with that, Tony, you got anything? No, I'm I'm good, Corey. You covered it pretty pretty solidly. Just if you guys want to, if you want to check out more more content from us, just please head on over to the uh, the Facebook group and. Just uh, just post some horror stuff, and it can be funny memes, or you know, just what your pickups are. Show it'd be great to see some collections. I still want to see uh, collections from people. I always enjoy mm-hmm. those those pictures and those updates and stuff like that. So you got them, post them. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. Well, folks, with that, Power Five. Power Five. <laughs> Love you guys. Later, guys. <laughs>